Hi, I'm Roger, and I'm going to talk about highly multiplex single cell full length cDNA sequencing with 10x genomics and R2C2. Most biological studies are aimed to figure out what a group of cells or a tissue is doing, and one way to investigate this is through RNA sequencing. For years, the gold standard has been to use Illumina because of their high accuracy, but the problem with this is that short reads aren't able to uh, span multiple exons, so it's extremely difficult to be able to assemble full isoforms. One way to get around this is to use uh, a long read technology like Oxford Nanopore, where you maintain all of your exon connectivity, which makes it extremely simple to see which isoforms are getting expressed by your samples. The problem with using nanopore sequencing is that the accuracy isn't quite as good as Illumina. And for this, we developed R2C2 and C3POA, which aims to increase single molecule accuracy from 90% to 98% median uh, using circular consensus sequences. With this increased accuracy, we wanted to pursue experiments that were previously infeasible. And one such experiment is highly multiplex single cell sequencing with 10x. 10x enables highly multiplexed single cell sequencing through the use of cellular barcodes which get attached to each of your cDNA molecules. Using normal nanopore sequencing, it's highly inefficient to try to demux these reads into single cells, but with our increased accuracy with R2C2, we're able to effectively demux all of our reads. For our experiment, we sequenced 3,000 single human immune cells and split the cDNA into two pools, one for Illumina sequencing and one for R2C2 sequencing. All of our data were analyzed using standard tools, and they ultimately resulted in um, cell clusters that were derived from gene expression data. And keep in mind that these analyses were done completely separately. So these are T-SNE plots, which take our highly dimensional expression data and simplify it down into two dimensions. And this leaves us with three main cell clusters being uh, T-cells, B-cells, and monocytes. And the uh, clusters are very similar between both technologies. These cell types were identified through marker genes, namely CD7 for T-cells, CD79A for B-cells, IL-1B for monocytes, and HLA-DRA for B-cells and monocytes. While the expression between R2C2 and Illumina is extremely similar, something that R2C2 gives us that Illumina doesn't is the full-length isoform information. An example of this is this genome browser shot of NF-kappa-B inhibitor delta. At the top, we have all of the known isoforms for this gene, followed by all of the reads for each of our cell types that are separated into individual cells as delimited by the black lines. If you were to call isoforms on this bulk data set, a lot of these isoforms would be thrown away because they'd be seen as noise, because there aren't enough reads to support them in proportion to the whole data set. However, if you were to call isoforms on individual cells and then pool them, what you would see is the true isoform diversity within a cell type. Next, we wanted to look at B cells, which are encoded by two highly diverse transcripts in the, or their heavy and kappa or lambda light chains. Usually, uh, pairing heavy and light chains requires single cell sequencing as well as a specialized protocol from 10x, but here we're able to pair together heavy and kappa light chains uh, without any modifications to our protocol. So it's easy to see that R2C2 makes um, making better transcriptomes easier and can give us insight into um, the human immune system. And with that, I'd like to thank my funding and my lab and the cool guys over at the Nanopore Group. So thank you.